In this lesson, we're going to be looking at some stuff with arrays and how we can populate array content, how we can randomize that array content, how we can create random numbers with a minimum and maximum with JavaScript, returning those back into an array where we build out an array, how we can select a random item from that created array using the index value, how we can create an array really quickly with just the one line of code with numbers that are from the starting number to the ending number and that will create this type of array and let's uh, add one to that so creating an incrementing value for i as well how we can use the sort and reverse for the arrays and then also how we can randomly sort the content of the array so that we can get different items and this is sorting the array in place returning back different values for the first item with the index value of zero. So that's all coming up in this lesson. A lot of common stuff that you're gonna to need to do with random and arrays. Let's go ahead and we're gonna create an array with a bunch of random numbers using the math random value in JavaScript. I've got a index file that opened up within the browser on the right hand side linking to a file called apps3.js and this is where our JavaScript code is going to go. So let's first off, we're going to create an array. So the array can be created as a constant variable as we're going to be changing the content within the array but not reassigning the value of ARR variable to anything else. So it's going to be always maintained as an array. Let's create a function that we can use in order to generate some random numbers. And I'll just call it random. So we want to be able to pass in a minimum and a maximum number that we want to generate and then return back the result. So let's create the result and then we're gonna return that back. So using math random will give us a random number. So this is gonna be zero to just under one it's going to be returned back that random value and in order to get the number to the value that we want to return it to we need to multiply it so we're going to be multiplying it by the value of max but we're also going to be subtracting the value of minimum and then adding one to it so that's going to result in a value for the random number between the maximum and the minimum and then we just need to add the minimum on top of it. So let's add in another rounded bracket and we need to add the minimum back in. So that way we're getting a random value from within the span of minimum to maximum. So if the minimum number is 10, the maximum number is 15, that's gonna result in a value from 10 to 15 being returned back. And we also need to add in the math floor and what this will do is this will allow us to rand, ran, round the value back down. Uh, let's return back the response. And then we'll create a loop. We'll, we'll run it 100 times. And increment i by 1. So we have an increment. And we'll console log out the result of ren value from 10 to 15. So see what type of results that we get. So we get a low of 10 and we get a high of 15. And we don't get anything outside of that span of the minimum and the maximum. So this is going to be including the minimum and maximum value within this random number generation. If we want to get a random value from an array, so what we'll do is we'll insert this value and we'll just create the array so using push we'll populate the array with the result for the random number and we can actually get the function because we're returning back the result and just deposit it within that array also if you wanted to shorten this we don't need to use a variable, we can just use the return. And that will save us a line of code, streamlining our function. So now 
when we load the page, our array is going to have 100 values within it, and they're going to be all of these random values. So if we want to select a random value from the array, we can select that. And I'll do this within a loop again. And we'll run it 20 times. And we want to select our random value and we're going to output it into the console. So the value will be within a variable called val. We're going to specify the array that we want to use. And we need to now select the index value from the array. So we can do this within a separate variable as well. We're going to use the math floor and then math random and multiply it by the number of items within the array, so the length of that array. So that's going to get us an index value, and then we can use that index value to turn return back the value that's contained within the array. And for now, what we'll do is we'll console log out the index value, and then we'll also log out the result from the array. So that gives us this type of result, where these are all random, and these are all the values that are going to correspond within the array. So if I do list out the array, and I can look and see that the first, with the index value of 1, is 994, and we see that, in fact, it is 994. So the first item within the array with the index value of 1, where the first item is has an index value of 0, but the second item with an index value of 1 has 994 as the value that's being returned back. If we want to generate the array and have an array with random numbers, we can do that as well. And we can set that up within one line of code using four. So we'll create a second array. And right now we'll just start that out as a blank array. And then let's uh, loop through. So we'll create the loop, setting up the variable of i to be one. And then the second array that we've created, we're going to push into that the value of i plus one. And we're going to continue while that is going to be less than 10. And this is going to be a case where we do need to include the semicolon because this is going to be one statement where i equals one. And then the second statement is going to be where we're going to be pushing in the value of i while it's less than 10. So this is where we need the semicolon in order to end the two statements that we've got within the four. And what this will do is this will allow us to create an array with those values. So let's see what that looks like. So we've got an array that we've created starting at a value of 1 and going all the way to 10, creating 10 items within the array, each with an incrementing value. And that's going to be coming from the value of 1. So if you want to do one with 50 items within the array, you can easily create that as well. Or if you want to create an array with just blank content in there, you can do that as well. So there's a number of different items there that you can do. And if you just have that like this blank, it's actually not going to create anything because there's no value that's being added into the array. And it's going to be continuously looping. So you just got to make sure that you have at least some value that you're adding in to the push. Otherwise, you're going to throw an error with this type of function. Another common task that you might have with an array is to shuffle the order of the values within the array. So let's uh, create an array with 10 items there. We've got it listed on the left hand side. And those are just the random numbers that we're still generating. And what we want to do is we want to create a sort of that array. So let's uh, create that. And that will be array number two that we'll use. And the result will be from array. And we'll just do a sort of the array. And we'll console log out array number two. We'll console log out array number one, the original array. And we notice that both of them now have the same sort order, where we've done a sort on the array. It's sorted them numerically. 
you can also do a reverse order sort. And so when we're assigning a value of one array to the other array, so it's gonna be still referencing the same memory location. So essentially, now we can access the array with either ARR2 or ARR. So they're both gonna be referencing that same uh, set of data that's gonna be sitting within the memory location. So when we're sorting one, we're also gonna be sorting the other. There's also a reverse, which allows us to sort the numbers within the reverse order. So when we refresh that, we see that with the reverse, now it's taking the largest number first and then going down from there. We can also use the sort order and pass in a value into the sort order to change the sort order. So let's create another one. And you can also do it in place, so you don't have to actually assign a new variable to it. So let's do a sort. And within the sort itself, you have an opportunity to pass in a function. So this function is going to be returning back a result. And that result of the function will return back. So if we do a return of negative, this is just going to do the default sort order. And if we return back a positive, that's going to do uh, reverse sort order. So we see that the largest number first. And also notice that 86 is here. So what it's doing is it's taking the first character from the values and applying the sort order as if they were strings. So it actually wouldn't matter if they're strings or if they're numbers. It's still going to be sorting it the same way. Uh, so let's make a quick update on that. We're, we'll select that and then we're going to convert it into a string. And as it gets pushed into the array, we can use the to string to convert that code into the string and just save that. So that gives us the string values. So notice that there isn't a difference between the sorting of the strings or sorting of the numbers. So it just takes the first character and does the sort order that way. So also what we were looking at where we can randomize the returned results. So we can do a random value here. So if we do a math random and do a negative five, so subtracting a 0.5, so that can turn the result either positive or negative, and that will change the way that the returned results are sorted. And this way we're always gonna get a random sort order. So if we output it, and then we do another randomized order of it, this is just randomly sorting those values. So always returning back a different value for the array and randomizing the results that are contained within the array. So that's one of the quickest ways to do a random randomizing of the array content. If you wanna just select one item from the array, you can do that as well it's by randomizing the index value and then returning back one of the random index values from the array. And that's an easier way if you just want one result, but if you want to randomize the entire array, then you can use the sort to do this and accomplish that.